Okay, this is going to be a very long video, uh, especially because I'm just too lazy to actually do video editing to skip out any uh, stuff like this where I'm just kind of pausing to think and stuff like that. So, sorry about that. I'm just too lazy. There should be timestamps on this video for you to skip ahead to different topics and whatnot. Uh, I'm making this video because I know a lot of my videos in the past I have uh, screwed up sort of the uh, primarily the uh, audio mixing uh, where I'm not talking loud enough to be heard over the game. Uh, that's uh, something it, you can uh, work on as far as just constantly being of the mindset that you need to talk at a certain volume level. Uh, but there's also other things you can do, uh, like putting filters on your microphone and the game sound, which will uh, make it easier to hear you. Um, so yeah, this is primarily aimed at stuff where you're recording, uh, video game ga gameplay, uh, and, and you're, you're also talking at the same time with the microphone. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what you're hearing right now is very suboptimal settings. I'm deliberately talking uh, kind of loud uh, to make sure you can hear me properly and over the course of the video we're going to uh, put some filters on the microphone and adjust some settings and whatnot so that uh, you can hear me better and uh, yeah. So I have sort of a uh, a demo video of what how how the sound currently is and how we're gonna change it like what we're gonna change it to in this video here that I'm that I pre-recorded so we're gonna watch that real quick time for a little bit of zoom zoom Oh, I forgot to mention. So I, when I recorded this video, I overlaid in the bottom right the OBS audio mixer. Um, so the first column is the unfiltered game sound. The second column is the unfiltered mic sound. Um, so for for this first watch through the video, those are the relevant columns. These other columns, those ones aren't in the mix. I'll talk to those the second time we watch the video. I am talking pretty loud right now. My normal volume voice is more like this. I'm roughly 12 inches from the microphone. I got some game sounds going. Hopefully you can still hear me, but it might be a little bit difficult. Boom. Yep. And that's about all. We want to keep this video nice and short. Alright, so you can hear at the start when I'm talking and my microphone volume's up in the yellow. Uh, the uh, you can hear me pretty well but when I start to kind of relax my voice a bit uh, then my microphone's more in the upper green which is around the same level that I have the game sounds at and it becomes harder to hear me over the game sounds uh, so we're gonna watch this again with the filters on the mic and the game sound uh, so, uh, we're going to hit uh, this other audio track to uh, listen to that. So, 
the third column here is the game sound with or, uh, a filter on it. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, the fourth column is the microphone with a few filters on it. Uh, so the microphone, we have something called compression, which kind of... Uh, it decreases sort of the uh, relative volume between when you're talking quietly and talking loudly. Um, so that allows you to uh, put some extra gain on the microphone so that even if you're actually talking kind of mumbling, it'll still be pretty loud. Um, and then there's also some noise reduction stuff for uh, helping get rid of some of the background noise in the microphone. Uh, and then, so the filter on the game sound uses something called uh, sidechain compression, also known as ducking. And what that does is, uh, the, the general idea is when I'm talking on the microphone, it decreases the game sound temporarily so that you can hear me better on the microphone. Uh, so I have it set maybe kind of severe in this video, uh, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, and yeah, it, it helps a lot for just if you want the vault, the game volume to still be decently high, but for it to not, uh, be just, uh, not be too loud. Like when you're talking. Time for a little bit of zoom zoom. I am talking pretty loud right now. My normal volume voice is more like this. I'm roughly 12 inches from the microphone. Now we got some game sounds going. Hopefully you can still hear me, but it might be a little bit difficult. Boom. Yep. And that's about all. We want to keep this video nice and short. Okay, so that's what we're going for in this video. Uh, before we get to actual OBS settings stuff and doing all the filters and stuff, I'm going to talk about some other basic kind of stuff first uh, to make sure you're not uh, missing any kind of uh, silly basic stuff, and that's gonna give you trouble uh, so first thing I'm gonna talk about right now is hardware uh, I have I'm using a blue Yeti microphone which I got on sale for $70 like 10 years ago uh, there's people out there that are using like $400 microphones uh, Definitely not necessary uh, for uh, most cases. Uh, just with some good noise reduction and stuff, you can definitely uh, get a lot of mileage out of a more inexpensive microphone. Uh, headphones. Um, you definitely want to be wearing headphones just so that uh, your game sounds aren't like coming out of your speakers and then going into your microphone and giving this feedback problems that uh, kind of messes up things. So you definitely want to be wearing headphones. I specifically recommend you get some kind of 
open ear headphones. Uh, if you don't know what open ear headphones are, uh, they're headphones where when you wear them, you can still hear things that are happening around you in the room. Uh, this is, uh, I find it most useful just because uh, I like to be able to hear myself talk without it being like this weird muffled sound. Uh, there is a way that you can uh, set up set it up so that you can actually hear your voice uh, from the computer that gets recorded in the microphone but to me it sounds a little weird and there's also like a very slight delay to it so it's I find that just to be weird so I recommend open ear headphones um and one more thing for hardware is you specifically need some kind of hardware volume knob to adjust the volume that gets sent to your headphones um the uh So in my case, I'm using, uh, my computer sound goes out to my speakers, uh, which have a volume knob on it, and I plug my headphones into my speakers, and so I use the head, or excuse me, I use the volume knob on my speakers to adjust the volume for my headphones. Um, so yeah, if, if you're just like plugging your headphones into like a laptop or something and you don't have a volume knob on your headphones uh, it's not uh, that's definitely not a good situation uh, specifically what you want is you want to be able to adjust the volume of the game sounds that you hear uh, to be the same level that the people watching your video is going to hear. Otherwise, you have this kind of weird disconnect from your audience where maybe if the volume's louder for you, then you start talking louder to try to make sure that you're talking over the sound of the game. Or if it's if the volume's too quiet for you, then you don't uh then you don't talk as loud and then you don't realize that you're talking too quiet to be heard over the game. So you definitely want to be aiming for having your headphone volume at the, uh, at the same level that other people are going to be hearing it. Uh, you can't, you can't just turn the volume down in windows like this because uh, because OBS records the uh, the computer sounds as if it's at full volume whether or not you turn this up or down all right uh, so some basics about using your microphone um, depending on what kind of microphone you get it might have a different pickup pattern the blue yeti that i'm using has a few different pickup patterns that you can switch between uh but the one i'm using is called cardioid and basically it it receives more volume from uh from sounds that come from the front side of the microphone so uh, whatever microphone you're using, you need to figure out what the pickup pattern is. And, uh, like if it's omnidirectional, it doesn't really matter which way your microphone's facing, but if it's like a cardioid one, then you need to make sure you're talking towards the front side of the microphone. Uh, there's something out there called a pop filter. Uh, it's probably a good thing to get. I do not have one myself, though. Just for reference for how my voice sounds in this video. Uh, 
sort of the general idea of it is to kind of soften real harsh harsh sounds uh especially like sudden harsh sounds um so it's uh kind of a quality of life thing for your viewers if you have a pop filter so although I don't have one myself I would recommend I would recommend it um, I'm talking about 12 inches away from my microphone uh, you'll definitely see a lot of people out there who are closer to their microphone and that is not wrong per se but here's the thing is the volume that your microphone picks up uh, is drastically different depending on how far away from the microphone you are so if you're normally like four inches from your microphone and then you like lean back in your chair or something and say something then the volume of what you say when you're leaning back in your chair is way way lower so I have my settings for my microphone to be based around it being about 12 inches from my face which means that if I lean back in my chair then it's uh the relative increase in distance isn't that much so the the volume of me talking doesn't go down nearly as much uh it's also uh it's also important uh as far as whether or not you want to pick up other sounds in the room so if you're like a podcaster or something, it's uh, you probably do want to have the microphone pretty close to your face so that you don't have to turn the gain up as much, which will allow you to uh, not get as much of the uh, any kind of background sounds. Uh, but if you're someone who's like moving around more or you're on camera, for example, and you want stuff from farther away to be able to be heard, uh, then I'd recommend you have your settings set up for the, the microphone to be farther from your face. Uh, for example, if you're like on camera and your audience sees something that they happen that they see something that happens on camera but they can't hear it then it's kind of this weird immersion breaking type of thing um so yeah it's kind of a preference thing uh for how far from your face you want your microphone to be uh and then uh, I would say even if you have the microphone close to your face, you don't want it like directly in front of your mouth. Uh, and the reason is if you're like blowing like directly into the microphone and stuff, it uh, it'll give you much louder kind of uh, poof sounds and whatnot. Uh, you don't want to you don't really want to be like suddenly loud like that in general which part of the part of that's part of why the pop filter is there but you also just want the microphone to be kind of a little off to the side so that you're uh yeah not just blowing air directly at, at the microphone all right let's see um we're gonna talk about let's see I already talked about windows volume talked about speaker volume oh one more thing about the volume for your speakers when I say speakers I'm talking about to your uh, 
I'm talking about like the physical volume knob that I was talking about for for your uh, for your headphones, but it's on my speakers in my case, so that's why I'm calling it speaker volume. Um, uh, just for for future reference, if you do end up changing the volume on your speakers later on, uh, you might want to put like a piece of tape or something where the uh, the appropriate level is for when you're recording stuff uh, just so that you can easily get back to that same volume level that you had before um okay looks good now we can finally talk about some OBS sound setting stuff and let me switch scene over to my OBS here. That button. Yes. Okay. So OBS sound setting stuff. We'll go into settings to start and we'll go to audio. Your audio devices is going to be the first thing you want to look at when setting up OBS. Uh, so your, your video game sounds will... Assuming you're recording games like on your computer, uh, is going to come from your desktop audio, uh, which should be your default audio, uh, your Windows default audio thing. So, if you bring up your uh, your Windows sound settings, your your default audio thing will be this thing which will normally be to your, your speakers or your headphones. Um, in my case, I have it as this voice meter input thing. I will explain later why I'm using that. But all you need to know for now is you just leave that as default. Um, now I have a second desktop audio, which also is default. And that is so that I can record filtered and unfiltered game sound as separate audio tracks. Um, I'll talk about that a little more later, but that's why I have that like that. Uh, the microphone, you have your microphone. Uh, I have a second copy of my microphone also just for recording the filtered and unfiltered microphone for just for the purposes of this video uh, normally that's not something I would do uh, and then I will explain later what this voice meter aux output thing is why I have that on there uh, so for for the the simplest of setups you just need your desktop audio and your microphone as inputs. Uh, now we want to go to the output settings. So if you're streaming, uh, you will, you'll be streaming on, you might as well just use audio track one, uh, the Twitch VOD track. I haven't used this myself cause I don't stream cause my internet sucks too much but uh, the twitch VOD track is supposed to be so that your live stream it generally it's so that you can have your live stream use one audio track but your twitch VOD uses another audio track which will generally be which will generally be a track without something such as uh well I don't want to encourage anything uh per se but uh l l let's just say your your Twitch VOD track is what goes in your VODs so you can have it where your VOD track filters out st something that is in your live stream uh, but since I'm just doing recording, uh, you want to make sure you got your audio track one checked. And if you're using any additional audio tracks, then you check those as well. Uh, 
So typically you don't really need any other, more than one audio track, but here's here's why I would recommend having two. So one will be your game sound and your microphone mixed together. And then your second audio track would be just the game sound. And the reason you would want this is so that you can edit a video together later if you want to do some kind of like compilation video or something that will allow you to have the game sound without your microphone. Uh, so whether that's like your Call of Duty kill montage or something or maybe you're gonna make like a review for the game and you want to have the game sound from some certain part of the game without you talking over it so that's why you would have that's that's kind of the the primary reason i would recommend having two audio tracks uh so under the audio tab up here you can uh you can name those audio tracks uh, now let's cancel out of that. Uh, so if you go to your little audio mixer section down here, uh, your, uh, your audio inputs won't be named like this. You, uh, you right click and rename them to what you want. Uh, they will show up in alphabetical order from what I've seen after you close uh, OBS and reopen it. Uh, so you may want to keep that in mind as far as if you want these to show up in a certain order, you can, for example, put a number in front of them to, uh, to make that happen. Uh, now you can right click the window and go to advanced audio properties and over here on the right is where you set which audio tracks each of these audio devices get output to. So in my case here, my first track, I have the unfiltered game sound and the unfiltered mic sound and this third one I call comms, which I'll explain, I'll explain that later. Uh, the, the second track I have just my unfiltered mic sound, uh, I have one for the, the unfiltered game sound, I have the fourth track is the filtered game and filtered mic sound together, and then etc, etc, uh, but like I said earlier, in, in general, uh, two tracks is more than enough. Uh, oh, and this is also where you can set if you don't have open ear headphones and you want to be able to hear yourself, you can set your microphone as a uh, to monitor and that will send out the signal to whatever you set as your your monitor output uh, so that you can hear yourself talk uh, or you can monitor some other input for whatever reason if you want to uh, let me go back to the settings that's uh, I forget where that is it's somewhere else in the settings here it is. So under audio advanced, the monitoring device. Now, if you have this as default, but your desktop audio is reading as default, then if you set your microphone to be a uh, monitor and output, then your microphone output will get um, 
your microphone output will get um, recorded, but it also get mixed in with your game sounds. So, in the case on the first track, you'll basically have double microphone audio. And on the, the track where you wanted to only have game sound, it'll actually have the game sound and the microphone. So, uh, that's not ideal. Uh, and like, so you need to set, you need to set it up a little differently. I don't really want to get into it. But you need to set it up a little bit differently if, for whatever reason, you need to to monitor your your microphone. Uh, okay. So that's kind of the basics. Oh, one more thing. So with OBS volume settings is. Never touch these volume sliders. Leave them all at zero decibels. And the reason is just... Same thing as I explained before is that you want to have a... Uh, for the game sounds, you want to... You want to always be listening to the game at the same volume that your viewers will be listening to the game. So that you are... Uh, Making sure that you're like talking at the the right level and you know when the game sound is too loud and stuff like that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. So now we can actually get into some... Well, this is going to be kind of an intro that's more basic information, I guess. But... We need to talk now about how loud your microphone should be. Um, and like the short answer is you want your microphone to be in the mid to upper yellow when you're talking. Uh, the reason is say you go to YouTube and you go to a video and the volume is too low. You can't hear what the person's saying. Then YouTube doesn't have a way to turn up the volume for that video. Assuming you go to the video and it's already at maxed. You hadn't like decreased the volume for some other video and gone to that video. So the person to be able to hear you, they have to turn up the sound on their speakers to be able to hear you. But once they do that, then everything else on their computer becomes too loud. So if they're like listening to music or an ad pops up or they just get one of those Windows uh, notification sounds where it's like bling or whatever, it it's just way too loud. And then that's a poor experience for them. They either suck it up, but then they're annoyed that your video is so low on volume or they turn all their other volume settings down or they just move on to some other video because they don't want to deal with your low volume problems so it's always better to be loud it's very easy for them to just turn the volume down on a video but turning up the volume gives all those problems so, uh, what I recommend is you go to anything that's got people talking loud on YouTube, which is going to be pretty much like any kind of high production thing, like sports casting and stuff, or like esports casting if it's like semi decent production values they're always going to be talking uh pretty loud and if you have OBS open you'll see on the mixer that the computer sounds will be 
always in the uh, the upper yellow when they're when they're being loud. Sometimes in the red, but for the most part, the upper yellow is where you're aiming at. Uh, okay, and then so the other thing we're going to talk about for how loud your microphone should be is consistency. So I've mentioned this earlier, but the the distance you are from your microphone, if that changes, then it changes how loud you get recorded as. Um, so ideally, you'll always be talking at the same distance from your microphone. Uh, and then your voice volume level... Uh, Ideally, you'll always be talking at the same volume level, but that's uh, that that's like all well and good if you're doing like a podcast or something. It's very easy to constantly just talk at the same volume level and not move and whatever. But if you're doing something that's a little more active or if you're just streaming a video game for like eight hours straight... Uh, you're not going to be able to constantly talk at the the nice loud volume level like I am right now. Your voice is going to get tired after a bit, and then you're going to talk a little quieter, and then uh, that's just not really ideal. So we're going to talk about something called compression. We're going to add a compression filter to the microphone. I'm going to set up settings and then I'll explain what it does. So go to your microphone, go to filters, add a filter, compressor, and ratio four, uh, threshold negative 24. And, whoops, output gain of 12. Now, what the compressor does, I'm going to explain this actually earlier in the video. Well, so what the compressor does is it decreases how much louder a loud sound is than a quiet sound if the volume is above the threshold amount so for example say if I'm talking quietly at some certain volume level and then I talk real loud then the loud volume maybe it was at like four times louder before but now it's only at like 50% louder. Um, so it's still easy for people to tell that you're talking louder on part of that is like other, other, uh, audio cues and also like visual cues. If you're on camera, then you'll be like more excited or something. Uh, people will see that and they'll hear it in your voice. But it's not going to blow their ears out. Uh, so, the that's what the compression gives us. And since it decreases the volume level of everything above the threshold, then you add the gain so that you bring the volume of your microphone back up to the yellow. Well, the yellow is what you're aiming for. Um, now, you'll see that it sometimes goes up to the red. Uh, sort of in theory, uh, if compression happened instantaneously, then with these settings, you couldn't actually get the audio above negative uh, six decibels. Uh, 
the, w the way the ratio works is however many decibels above the threshold it is, it decreases by the ratio. So if we're at zero decibels, that's the very top. Uh, then we're 24 decibels above the threshold. Uh, you divide by four, that's the ratio. So now we're at six decibels above the threshold. So we're at negative 18 decibels. And then our output gain is 12 decibels. So negative 18 plus 12 would be negative six decibels. So theoretically, uh, the volume shouldn't get above that, but the compressor has this startup time thing called attack, um, which uh, uh, gives some kind of problems if you make it too low for whatever reason, however the algorithm works. I don't exactly know. But the point is the uh, the output gain gets applied even when the the compressor hasn't kicked in so the uh, so during the attack the very start of when you start talking louder uh, the output gain gets applied but the press the compression hasn't kicked in so you can max out on the volume because of that during that time so we actually have to add a limiter to fix this problem uh, you can leave it as negative six decibels on the limiter if you want or I just bring it all the way up to zero decibels it's fine um, but the limiter prevents you prevents the sound from going above whatever the threshold is so uh, I have it at zero here and you can bring the release time down to like 10 minute milliseconds and it's fine all all the limiter has to do is to uh, in this case uh, because the compressor, since the compressor can only output more than the negative six decibels during that attack time, the limiter only has to really be active for a very short time and, and then it's fine. So, uh, the, the reason you don't want your microphone, shit, I never talked about the microphone gain I don't think okay so you don't want to ever get the microphone to the red normally because what happens is the uh, something I've heard it called clipping I've heard it called what else I've heard it called some other word for it but your voice gets real like garbled and like messed up uh which sounds absolutely terrible uh if the microphone goes above the zero decibels because it it has to like cut it off and it doesn't uh it doesn't do a nice job like the limiter does so if you have the limiter on here then it's fine here but if the uh if the input volume of your microphone is uh is too loud if it goes into the red like without these filters on it like if i go yeah uh then it probably garbles the sound so uh, assuming your microphone has a gain knob on it, like mine does, uh, before you before you put these filters on, what you want to do is you want to adjust it so that when you're uh, so that you pretty much never go into the red. Now, if I shout really loud. Then it'll go into the red, but like 99% of the time, I won't go into the red. Um, so if you find yourself shouting a lot, 
you may want to turn down the the gain on your microphone kind of depends on you how much of that garbled sound is uh acceptable on your videos so you, you may want to turn it down so that you never go into the red or you can just have a little more self-control and make sure you never shout and then it'll uh essentially never go into the red it might still go into the red if you like thump your desk or something uh something like you know unintentional per se but yeah in general your microphone volume you want to never go into the red but like i said once when you put the compressor and the limiter on there you'll you'll see it go into the red more but it's fine when that is the result of uh, the gain on the the compressor uh if you're still talking loud enough your input to the microphone is too loud then you'll still get that garbled sound even if it's uh even if it's not showing up as in the red on your uh on your audio mixer thing so you can you can have like a separate uh audio input for your uh your unfiltered microphone if you want to have a uh if you want to be able to like monitor the actual input volume of the microphone to be able to properly see when you are talking too loud Okay, that is, uh, that is good for the microphone loudness. Um, now you can probably hear at this point after I put the gain on the compressor that I have a fan that's been going on in the background all this time. It's kind of loud, but, uh may have been harder to hear before I put the gain on the microphone but now that the gain's on there uh, whenever I'm not talking you should be able to definitely hear it like now so what we're going to do now is get rid of some of that noise so on the microphone we're gonna add another filter uh, called a noise gate Hit OK. Uh, you want to press a little arrow, move it up to the top so that it happens before the compressor and the limiter. And what the noise gate does for you is it cuts off volume that is below a certain amount. So my settings that I had it on before was negative 36 open negative 32 close or i got those in the opposite order the negative 36 close negative 32 open so when it detects volume above negative 32 then the microphone's on and when the volume of the microphone goes below negative 36 it just completely zeroes out the uh, the sound so you should be able to hear uh, well you you should be able to hear and see on the little mixer thing the bars that when I stop talking the fan can no longer be heard because the fan sound the fan sound is not uh, above the uh, the threshold so uh, so that's a big uh, quality of life thing because uh, even though you can technically still hear the fan sound while I'm talking it is just so much quieter than me talking that it doesn't really make much of a difference um 
might might be like slightly harder to understand or something but it in in general it's a, a huge quality of life type of thing now if you're like playing a game at the same time and the game's got sound going then you probably can't really hear the fan over the game anyways but if everything else is quiet then uh uh you would uh without the noise gate you'd be able to hear the fan sound but uh what we are also going to add is something called noise suppression so that's another filter built right into uh obs studio and where is it noise suppression so we're going to move that up to the top before the noise gate and i'll leave it on this one there's this speaks low cpu usage one you could also try um i have like a 12 core cpu so i'm not worried about more cpu usage uh well you'll see on the speaks one it will lower the fan sound uh let me turn off this uh noise gate also so you'll see on the speaks one when i turn it on that it'll lower the fan sound um but but it's still there uh but if i turn it to the the other one it uh it's actually really good it just completely gets rid of that constant fan sound uh now the the noise suppression and the noise gate won't get rid of uh other other sounds other things that you would consider noise in the room like you hitting your hand on the desk or something like that um uh, so non non constant background sounds will still get through uh but any kind of constant sounds like the fan the uh the noise suppression and the the noise gate work wonders on um da -da 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 -da. okay so there's one more thing i'll mention briefly for microphone clarity is that you may consider putting an equalizer on your uh, on your microphone to adjust how your voice sounds slightly so you may get rid of certain deeper part of your voice that makes it harder to understand what you're saying or whatnot um now there's no built-in equalizer into obs studio uh you but you can put in a vst plugin uh i've tried one of these in the past and it crashed obs quite frequently so that's why i'm not currently using it we're going to show it to you here um but you can do some googling and uh if if you don't if you don't like the sound of your voice after these filters that i've shown you uh you can do some googling to try to find a good vst plugin that won't crash uh to use as an equalizer uh just make sure that you put in the equalizer before the uh before the limiter Ah, uh, so that if you're increasing the volume, it, uh, it doesn't, uh, give you problems. Okay, let me check my notes real quick, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yep. Okay. So, now we get to finally move on to talk about the game volume uh 
talked about this a little bit already as far as you want to make sure that you are hearing the game volume at the same level as your viewers are hearing the game volume and uh generally if you're using similar settings to what i've been recommending to have your microphone in the mid to upper yellow area then you want your game volume to be in the upper green area now this is a bit of a preference thing as far as if you want your video to be more of a immersive experience and you want the game volume to be coming out pretty loud and clear or if you want the game volume to be quieter and be more of a a background noise type of thing so so yeah it's it's kind of a preference thing uh but by default your uh your game volume is going to be uh fairly loud well it's going to be super loud in a lot of games when you first start them up so one of the first things you should do is go into the game volume settings and turn the volume down to uh sometimes uh sometimes like 50 percent is fine sometimes more like 30 percent it uh definitely varies from game to game how loud it is and uh like i said it's also a bit of a preference thing um and you'll also want to when you go in and turn the game volume down is uh you want to make sure you turn the subtitles on so that if for whatever reason you're talking during the game cutscene or something people still know what is being said in the game dialogue uh da -da 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 -da. Okay, so if you're not sure what a good game volume level is when you're uh, setting it up, uh, you can uh, make a recording of your voice with your uh, with these microphone settings that I've already told you about, so that your voice is like in the upper yellow and play that play that sound like well it'll be a video if you're recording with obs of course but play that video in the background while you're playing your game and lower your game volume so that it's low enough that you can clearly hear your voice that's uh because uh like as a content creator type of person what you're saying is very important for why someone would potentially want to watch you over somebody else so you want to make sure they can always hear what you're saying uh now part of the uh thing where you can go for like an immersive level of game volume versus more of a background noise type of game volume like lower level game volume part of what you can do if you want the game volume to be loud but you want to still be able to hear your voice clearly is you can use what i was talking about earlier near the start of the video which is to use something called ducking to uh, which temporarily decreases the game volume that gets recorded while you are talking on the microphone. So, uh, we'll show you that now for how to do the settings for that. Uh, so we'll go into filters for your game sound. You're going to add a filter, add a compressor. 
Uh, the ratio doesn't matter. What matters here is the threshold. And so when I recorded the video earlier, I was using negative uh, 24 as the threshold. Do, 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 do. Come on, right there. And you have to set the sidechain slash ducking source as your microphone. So what that does now is whenever your microphone level is above the threshold level, it decreases the game volume sound that gets recorded. Now, as, as you are playing the game and you're talking, you're not going to hear the volume decrease. But the people watching your video will uh, will will hear the volume decrease. But it's uh, they're they're not necessarily going to notice it. It just helps uh, make your voice a bit clearer. Um, the uh, Other thing you can do here, though, is you can uh, increase the release of it. And what that'll do is uh, it'll uh, take longer before the game volume gets brought back up to the level it was before. So... Uh, say if you put it at 500 milliseconds, then that means that the game volume won't be brought back up to the right level until half a second after you stop talking. So if you're talking a lot and you like kind of give short little pauses between words or what you say or whatever, then... Uh, this will uh, kind of just leave the game volume lowered as constant instead of being like fluctuating up and down more frequently. Um, so that's why you would uh, that's why you would uh, mess with the release on that. So we will look at the. Uh, the video again and we'll see uh, exactly what that does let me switch back over to my other scene and bring up the video okay uh, let me make sure I'm on the right audio track All right, so this is going to be the game volume with the ducking for when I talk on the microphone. So the game volume here uh, in the middle column, that's going to be the filtered game volume with the ducking. Uh, it's going to duck based on the fourth column here, which is the uh, filtered microphone. And you can uh, you can compare that game volume to the first column, which is the unfiltered game volume. So uh, whenever you see I'm talking on this microphone column, then the game volume of this column will be lower than the... Uh, unfiltered game volume
Uh, so yeah, this may be, uh, you may not need this or you may want to, uh, change your ducking settings and increase the threshold a bit. Uh, increasing the threshold will decrease the amount that the, uh, the game volume gets reduced. Um, because it only gets reduced when your microphone volume is above the threshold. But it also seems to be that it gets reduced by the amount that the microphone volume is above the threshold. So if I'm talking on the microphone, the threshold's at negative 24 decibels, and I'm talking at negative 6 decibels, then the game volume would get reduced by 18 decibels which is quite a lot but if you were to increase the threshold to uh let's say negative 18 decibels uh then when i'm talking at the negative six decibels then the game volume would only get reduced by 12 decibels so it's uh it's something to play with. Uh, you may end up deciding you don't like it at all, and you just want to keep the game volume uh, lower. Uh, but I like it as far as being able to keep the game volume uh, like reasonably loud and engaging, but still be able to use the ducking to allow me to talk and be clearly heard. Uh, let's see. Uh, whoops. Forgot to switch back over to the other scene. Because I was showing my, the OBS settings here again. So, this is the threshold I was talking about just now. Uh, on the game compressor. So... I had it at negative 24. If you think that's decreasing the game volume too much, then increase the threshold a little bit and see how you like that. Uh, let me see my notes here. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything else I want to talk about for the game volume. Oh. So, if, well, actually, that's kind of the next topic anyways. So, if you want to do like I suggested, which was to have your separate audio tracks, uh, specifically, if you want to do like, video compilations or whatever and you want to have a separate audio track with the unfiltered game volume uh, because the the ducking game volume kind of goes up and down and is essentially messed up as far as uh, if you wanted to do like a video compilation then you'll want to do what I showed earlier, which to, is to use your second desktop audio as a separate audio input. Uh, and then you have the unfiltered game volume on that channel or on that track so that uh, you have the, uh, the unfiltered game volume. Uh, just because the, uh, the ducking, uh, especially if it's got, like, a constant sound, or if there's, like, music that's at, like, normally a constant volume level and it's going up and down, it can be, uh, kind of annoying to listen to, so... I, dec I definitely recommend, if you are going to use the ducking, that you uh, you make sure and you have a second copy of your game audio that's unfiltered. 
that you're recording to your second audio track. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, kind of a trick is that maybe you have some kind of audio that you want to hear, but you do not want your viewers to hear. Um, so there's probably other ways to do this. What I'm going to show you is a uh, software I came across called uh, Voice Meter Banana. Um, so Voice Meter Banana is donationware. That means you can download it for free. They ask you to donate. This thing will pop up every now and again asking for you to donate, reminding you to donate. You can click remind me later and it will pop up again later uh, at some inconvenient time possibly. Or you can click the uh, I already made a donation button in the bottom left. And as far as I know, that prevents you from getting it to pop up at an inconvenient time uh at least i haven't seen it ever pop up on its own again uh but yeah you click the top left corner and you if you want to manually bring up that uh donation page so i'm not sponsored or anything like that by voice meter uh but yeah they have a, uh, they do have like a more commercial kind of version that you have to pay up front for. That gives you more, more stuff, but it's like more of the same stuff. So you probably won't need it unless you're uh, doing something a little fancier than what ninety nine percent of people do. So. <laughs> Uh, what voice meter banana does for you, the primary things is it gives you two virtual inputs and it gives you two virtual outputs. Um, uh, so the virtual inputs, the other software on your computer is going to treat that as an output device a sound output device so if you open up your windows sound settings you can choose a voice meter input to be your output device um so what that allows you to do is uh you set your voice meter input as your default sound device which is what OBS, uh, I showed it earlier, your OBS settings uh, records your computer audio as your default sound device, unless you change it. And then some, uh, some software on your computer uh, such as Windows Media Player what you can do is you can actually have it output to uh shit did i just close that no i didn't okay okay so the some software such as windows media player or discord allows you to select what audio device you want to output sound to so in this case um uh, instead of outputting windows media player to my default uh desktop audio thing which is the voice meter input uh i have changed it somewhere in the settings uh where I don't remember where it is. Devices. No. 
I don't remember. Somewhere in the settings, I've changed it. So this is actually outputting to the uh, the second virtual input on voice meter. So what that allows me to do is both of these are getting sent to the speakers. That's A1. When you initially set up voice meter, you click on the hardware output up here. You select your speakers. Um, and that means that these get played out your speakers. So everything that goes to my default gets played out my speakers, but everything that I have manually selected to go to the second voice meter virtual input also gets played out my speakers, but OBS for the computer sounds is only monitoring and recording off of the first one. So I can play my music and, uh, well, you can see, um, you can see here on the, uh, the virtual input that the sound's playing, the music's playing, and you can see here on the, uh, the A1 hardware output that it's going out to my speakers, uh, but OBS is not recording it. Now it is going to OBS. Um, let me pause this because it's kind of distracting me. Well, actually, I'll continue playing it so that you can actually hear it. This is my own music that I've created, so I'm not worried about any kind of copyright stuff for it. But so on voice meter, there are these virtual outputs, which I mentioned earlier. So I'm sending this second virtual input, not only to my speakers, which is a one, but also to B two, which is this virtual output. Now the virtual output can be uh, selected as a microphone input here in OBS, which is, uh, which allows me to, um, to, to play the sound in OBS in my, and to record the sound if I want to, uh, which is this comms channel that I have here. Uh, but that's why I have it muted. So if I actually just unmute it, then now you can hear the sound. Uh, so I'll, I'll mute it again and stop the music. So that's, that's a, uh, slightly more complicated than it necessarily needs to be. Uh, but that's that's a way you can play either you want to play music that only you can hear on your computer and you don't even have to send it to OBS if you don't want to ever record it or you can have it like uh do uh I call it comms cuz I initially intended this for like discord if for whatever reason I want to if I want to not record discord or like mute it temporarily uh then uh for the for the recording but i still want to like hear what they're saying in discord then i could do then i could do that so it's uh slightly more complicated than it needs to be because what you could do in your audio devices is in, for your second desktop audio is to just uh, select the uh, the voice meter aux input. That's the uh, that's what they call this second one, the second virtual input. 
Uh, and then you wouldn't have to do this send it to B2 thing. Uh, and you wouldn't need this, uh, this other one. But I didn't do that that way because I wanted to have the second, uh, the second copy of the, uh, the game sounds, the computer sounds for the unfiltered game sounds. So that's why I had to do the, the sort of roundabout way of sending it to the B2 channel. Okay. Uh, if anyone's actually watched this whole video, thank you for your time. Uh, and please make good videos with nice and loud, clear sounds. Uh, the primary thing really is having your microphone be at a consistently loud volume and having your game sound at a low enough volume that you can, uh, Um, that you can still, your viewers can still easily hear you talk over the game, the game volume. Yep. That's it.